o'clock on Friday, the 4th of October, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. Unbalanced and contradictory. This is how President Meta assessed the draft opinion of the Venice Commission regarding the legality of the decision of the head of state to annul his decree for the June 30th elections. In a letter directed to the chair of the Venice Commission, the president announced that the eight questions of the assembly trapped representatives of the Venice Commission. The project opinion is often contradictory with diametrically opposing statements on the same issues. There is an impression that the experts of the Venice Commission have been guided by some fixed ideas, making the facts and analysis inconsistent with the conclusions of the draft opinion. The inevit inevitability and impossibility of a complete fact-finding process that testifies to the profound and widespread extent of the political crisis in Albania leads to an erroneous assessment of the legal situation. For Ilir Meta, the draft opinion draws some conclusions that go beyond the Venice Commission's mandate by focusing on the court and the OSCE ODIHR. In some issues, experts have overstepped their advisory powers, impersonating themselves as judges. They have also gone beyond the scope of their work by interfering with the competencies and evaluation of the OSCE, ODIHR, the highest institution authorised to monitor and handle electoral matters. The assessment of the degree of risk in Albania by limiting itself to the truncated confrontation of public authority statements is unprofessional and outside the scope of the Venice Commission's expert work, states the letter. The ambiguity of the draft opinion according to the head of state allowed all parties to interpret according to political interests. This project opinion rekindled political polarisation just when the parties restored a bridge of dialogue. The draft opinion and the way it is built threaten to set a problematic precedent for a democratic social order, the letter continues. In addition to answering the Venice Commission's draft opinion, President Meta has also sent about 10 questions to the Venice Commission chair about the president's constitu constitutional duties. While from Leisure, he once again expressed that he has defended the constitution and democracy. Neither the results of Eddie Rama's justice reform nor his personal friendship with the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, seem to be enough for Albania to persuade sceptical EU countries to open negotiations. At a meeting of justice ministers of the region, Prime Minister Eddie Rama did not hide the disappointment of the Union's behaviour towards our country, despite being in front of other European diplomats. There is a corridor that divides us between the Western Balkans and the European Union. We play and you see us playing. Shake hands with us and then finally say, good guys, but not ready yet. We have no other choice. We have no alternative. We need to continue to love and trust this marriage of ours. It's been about two weeks, so maybe we have the next slap and we have to shake hands and have a drink together. We will exchange rings, but not get married. Remaining only engaged was the prose of Prime Minister Rama. For the head of the EU delegation in Tirana, Luigi Soreka, Albania is ready to open negotiations, but urged caution with justice reform, as he said history is not yet over. Expectations are high to see the Constitutional Court and the High Court functional again. Albanian citizens are eagerly awaiting for SPAC and the NBI to be established, and most importantly, they are waiting the first results of the work of these institutions. The collective duty is now to avoid slowing down in the middle of the journey. There is much work ahead and continued operation is necessary for it to succeed. The European Union will continue to be by your side. For the next their years, the, the EU will make more financial resources available with 42 million euro dedicated to the new justice program, said Soreka. The Secretary General of the Regional Cooperation Council, Malinda Bregu, warned the Albanian government that the European Union's stalemate on justice is expected to rise. Germany, in exchange for the yes to open negotiations, urges Albania to make the Constitutional Court and High Courts operational and to approve electoral reform before the EU's intergovernmental conference early next year. Meanwhile, the Parliament of the Netherlands will determine their stance on Albania's accession on October 8th. <coughs> The Prosecutor's Assembly has selected the former Debra leader, Esmeralda Tami Keshi, as the newest member of the High Court, sorry, High Council of the Prosecution. 
133 prosecutors out of 253 in attendance voted in favour of her. Opposing her was Prosecutor Vladimir Mara, who received 109 votes, while the remaining 11 votes were declared invalid. The gathering of prosecutors was called by Acting Chief Prosecutor Arta Marku, who is also one of the candidates for the General Prosecutor with a mandate of seven years. A list which also includes the Appeals Prosecutor Fationa Memchai and Serious Crimes Prosecutor Otsian Chela. The High Council of Prosecution is expected to convene soon to list candidates for chief prosecutors to be voted on by the Assembly. Esmeralda Keshi's name was mentioned to the media a few months ago regarding a debate which she had with the General Prosecutor over File 187, which passed to Deber. Vladimir Mara is known for being the prosecutor of File 339 as well as for the Tahiri case. Speaking of the Tahiri case, the prosecution has appealed the decision of the Serious Crimes Court against former Interior Minister Saimir Tahiri. The parties will continue the legal battle at the Appeals Court of the Serious Crimes, as the Serious Crimes Court sentenced Tahiri only for abuse of duty, choosing to instead dismiss the more serious accusations raised by the prosecution, such as the charge of participating in a structured criminal group and drug trafficking. Meanwhile, Tahiri himself also appealed the decision yesterday. The five-year prison sentence was for former Minister Tahiri was converted to three years and four months of probation, benefiting from a shortened trial. On the other hand, the prosecution sought a 12-year prison sentence against him. The case against Tahiri has also received the attention of internationals who commented on the serious crimes decision two weeks ago. Although it was viewed as a positive step towards seeing senior officials brought to justice, the United States considered the decision for abuse of duty as the sentence was discouraging. Through the National Ageing Plan for years 2020 to 2025, the Albanian government recognises that the income of the elderly is insufficient to support their livelihoods. So the solution is to increase pensions by 5% each year, with the proceeds being passed on to at least 10,000 beneficiaries. The official government report raises the alarm about the effects of an ageing population. For sociologists, the effects of ageing will not only be economic, but also social with Professor Dervishi of the Sociology Department at the University of Tirana explaining that the effects of ageing are not only physical, but also psychological. According to a study by the Albanian Ageing Network in 2017, it can be determined that about 8% of the elderly live alone and have no contact with their relatives. Tirana has been recognised by the United Nations as one of the cities that has done the most for sustainable development policies through planting trees, increasing pedestrian spaces and attending the needs of children. Tirana's mayor, Arian Veliai, attended the 80th session of the UN Committee yesterday to present Tirana and the initiatives undertaken to make the city more livable. It was a pleasure to be part of the founding cities of the UN Forum of Mayors, an initiative we started years ago in Geneva, the Day of Cities, and the fact that Tirana is an avant-garde when it comes to some low-cost but socially beneficial solutions such as planting trees, our pedestrian spaces and focus for the kids, it was really a moment to be proud of, to lead one of the cities that has today become an example, said Mayor Villiai. Viliai underlined the fact that Tirana managed to cope in a short time with the emergency situation after the earthquake. Today, Tirana is standing up and not only do I thank the member countries that helped us in the early days with the earthquake, such as Qatar, Kuwait, Italy, Greece and Turkey as well, but it was, it was also a way to show that a city like Tirana rises quickly, said Mayor Viliai. Given the post-earthquake situation, Valiai added that it was necessary to take all measures to be prepared for any kind of emergency that nature could bring. He stressed that Tirana is a city that preceded the UN's initiative to plant trees, giving the city more greenery and breathability. RTV Aura launches their most innovative TV program yet, which aims to depict Albania from the eyes of foreigners who choose to live in our country. 
Hosted by myself, Alexandra Lewis, the show is part documentary, part reality, and aims at driving an increase in tourism, as well as to encourage Albanian youth to take greater pride in their homeland, whilst also addressing problems and concerns relevant to Albanian society. The first of 24 episodes is tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. with retransmission on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. with the remaining episodes to be broadcast at the same times each week. Tune in to RTV Aura tomorrow at 7 p.m. to watch and follow, R A A and follow at alien underscore RTV Aura on Instagram and Facebook for the latest news on upcoming shows. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura News, thank you and good night.